Hey everyone and welcome back, this is The Happy Cat here and today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. And we're going to take a look at the absolute basics of shaders, what they are and how they work. This topic can get confusing pretty quickly, so we're going to stick to very basic examples in this video with some more advanced further reading in the description below and in further videos. So let's get started. A shader is a set of instructions to the GPU which are executed all at once for every pixel on the screen. So you might give a shader a pixel at a certain position and it returns a new color for that pixel. For example, a shader could say, for all pixels, look at their RGB value, their color, and add 50 to the blue value for all pixels. So this adds a blue tint to your entire image. And we could take that further. We can create a gradient by instructing the shader to increase the blue value as the X coordinate of a pixel increases so that we have less blue on the left and more blue towards the right. We could also add some motion over time by using wave functions like sine and cosine to, let's say, alternate a red and blue tint. I think it's important to develop a certain intuition when you're starting to think about how to solve problems with shaders. If you notice, we're not saying for each frame slowly change from red to blue. We're using a deterministic equation. We're using a sine function that doesn't care what frame it is, that doesn't care what any other pixels output is we just feed in a pixels position and its color and then it outputs a new color for that pixel so to illustrate this let's say we want our shader to create a checker pattern so pixels alternate between black and white we don't say if the previous pixel was black make the next one white Instead, we might say if the current pixel's X value is even and the Y value is odd, color it black and then alternate depending on the even and odd coordinates of the pixels because this is completely deterministic and completely blind to what any other pixel on the board is doing. Now let's say we have something a little more complicated like applying lighting to 3D objects. In this case, we need to use some equation to calculate what color each pixel should be to apply the highlights. This is where we may need some additional information, like maybe the normal vector and a lighting vector for the area we're calculating. Common examples of these equations are the Lambertian reflectance model for diffuse lighting or lighting on kind of rough or soft surfaces. And there's the Fong reflectance model for specular lighting or more of like shiny surfaces, which we can go into more detail in a future video. While those are considered more standard models, we can do some artistically interesting things with shaders and lighting. For example, cell shading is a type of shader where it gives a cartoony, flat 2D look to 3D models. You also hear it called a tune shader. It achieves this effect by using a few discrete colors to represent light and shadow, rather than having a sort of realistic gradient blend between the lights and darks. Let's look at this from a technical side. Conceptually, how does cell shading work? Let's say we're calculating the lighting on Wind Waker Link's tunic. For each pixel, we calculate the intensity of the lighting. If the intensity is above some number X, we may color it light green. If it's below, we color it dark green. This is in contrast to a more maybe realistic shader where instead of mapping and bucketing different intensities to two or three colors, we would find the closest green to the decimal value of the intensity, so the shade slowly gets lighter or darker. Note that this example is kind of simplified, but there is a link in the description to a very readable example of this kind of cell shading code. Another artistically interesting use of cell shading is the game Okami. I think Okami is interesting because it uses very little of this dynamic lighting. You can see the people and buildings and trees are all very flat. There's almost no dynamic shadow. It's mainly the shadows and details are painted on the models themselves rather than changing with a light source. And this lack of lighting makes them look like flat paper cutouts and it enhances is the feeling that the game is a giant painting no matter what angle you're looking at. 
Anyway guys, hopefully this gave you an idea of what shaders are and how they work. We've barely scratched the surface, so in future videos we will dive into the code and technical details, and I've also left, as mentioned, further reading and links that I think are super helpful in the description below. Today's video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 17,000 classes in technology, business, programming, even 3D modeling and game design. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can improve your skills and do the work you love, taught by real professionals. Skillshare believes in accessible learning and unlimited access is less than $10 a month. And we have a promo code YTHAPPY, Y-T-H-A-P-P-I-E, in the description down below. So the first 100 people to use the promo code will get their first two months to try it out risk-free. Now, personally, I've been using it to fill some gaps I have in my skills. I've been using it to brush up on Photoshop and graphic design tools and to learn and refresh myself on how to use programs like Maya to do 3D modeling. So hopefully you guys enjoy that and hopefully you're looking forward to more content in the coming months. But most importantly, have a happy day wherever you are and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.